hope it works. There we go. Please don't die. There we go. Greetings, humans. Greetings, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode. We are here. 29 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you shaved anus out there. Here's the real 29-year veteran of the woods. That's where bears live, people. Uh, especially when it starts raining, right as you go on stream. So, uh, a, a claws crossed. We've got electricity, internet, you know, all those things that you need for a live show, people. Live show. So, uh, a kind of a grab bag, a mixed bag here, if you will, of uh, some stuff that we have going on. We're going to try. I don't know. We did. We we're trying to do this the last time. Let me see if I can get to it here. Hang on the thing. Do the thing. Just the thing. And it doesn't work. Minutes. There it is. So, uh, we got the Grand Prix in uh, the other day. So, uh, I might want to go uh, look through some of that. Uh, Bear's only got a couple of couple of news stories here and only one campaign update, so a little bit of a light, a light show for you people, but uh, you know what, we've got, got one of the best, got, that. Uh, got one of the best chats out there, so at least, at least you can keep your company out here, so uh, yeah, there we go, there is that, and uh, I was trying to do, let's see, uh, yeah, trying to do, trying to do the overhead camera here as well, so we're going to get that. Hopefully licked here, people. Hopefully licked. So there you go. There's kind of the sort of picture in picture. Trying to do, do that the last time. It just didn't work out. So uh, that's all right. That is all right, people. All right. Uh, let's get right on into it. Uh, great to see P-Money here. Hope Beer isn't casting off on a three-hour tour. Because uh, I've heard of seven people who never came back from that. <clears throat> well, uh, no, no tours here today. Uh... I, I kind of, I don't know, I guess, I, I hate to announce this without knowing what's going to be going on, but uh, Bear may or may not be here on Saturday, so might have to cast off for, I don't know, about a week or so to get stuff. Uh, you know, it's hunting season, of course it's getting to be hibernation season, uh, and it's fall as well, so Bear's uh, got a lot of challenges here, got a lot of challenges, so uh, that is the reason for the the title there. And of course it's a, I like I like this uh kind of partial to this to this photograph here. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see, I'm here tonight uh, just to finish buying Halloween costumes. Oh that's this month, isn't it? Uh for my daughters, oh, I hope they are looking lovely and or scary out here. I tried to get them uh to go in bear costumes. Smart choice, sir. Uh, but they want Powerpuff Girls instead. Uh, sad. That is sad. Uh, yay, like show uh, means bear, uh, for crying out loud, bear, stupid hearts. Uh, bear will spend more time uh, on my awesome comments there. Yes, indeed. If you want your comments read by bear, go ahead. Uh, let me, hold on, let me. Bear has noticed this in the past. Like, he'll keep missing. There we go, live chat. There we go. I keep missing. Like, I'll go through uh, to put stuff in the archive. And it's like, gosh, I, I was reading the chat. And I didn't didn't see that chat. There's like several of them from uh, Grant the last time. The beer I didn't see live. I, I don't know. Uh, 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 um, uh, but let's get into the show and beer will, beer will comment more on that here in just a minute. So uh, let's go ahead and just get right on into it here with. Uh, the one and only <laughs> campaign update that Beer has here. Uh, good to see Uncle E. Uh, 544,173. So I'm still hanging in there. Half a million dollars. Um, campaign still goes on strong here. Goes on strong. But first, let's get to Beer. Where the heck? What the heck happened here? There we go. There it is. Uh, to the one and only here. Back from uh, Shad. Oh, you gotta talk like this. Shad Brooks. He says the graphic novel leather brown blah, 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 blah. Come on, Alf. Graphic novel. Leather bound cover sneak peek, he says. Our printer's been working diligently and now has the graphic novel leather bound covers done. And they look incredible. Crikey. Uh, a shrimp on the barbie. Uh, uh Dingo ate my baby. 
Uh, next, on to the binding, he says. There he is. So there you are. Uh, if you uh, checked it out, uh, gosh, we did this maybe uh, two weeks ago or so, where they had the, had the regular book. Uh, and this is the one from um, uh, Mike Miller. So uh, there you go. If you want, if you're like a bear and you hate reading stuff, you just want the pretty pictures, uh, this would have been the book for you. So uh, there you go. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I don't know if that, if the back cover there is finished. I guess that's just like an outline or a shadow. I, I'm not sure about the hand there. I'm not sure what he's trying to do with the hand. It's kind of an odd, odd, I don't know. Is he trying to, trying to catch something? I'm not sure. Feels like he's giving Bear the finger there. Uh, the mental finger. The mental finger right there. So there you go. That uh, looks like an interesting book. Oi, from Shad. Crikey. Uh, shrimp on the bobby. Uh, all that. All that. All that, mate. Crikey, indeed. <laughs> it's funny. Bear was actually talking with um, uh, Michael Bancroft when he was down there in Tampa. <laughs> of course, he lost his voice after Bear talked with him, so go figure on that one. But, uh... I was letting them know that they, they have the, um, the Outback Steakhouse, mate. You've never heard of Outback Steakhouse. I'm like, uh, yeah, Outback Steakhouse. They're like a um, Australian-themed restaurant that's uh, headquartered right here in Tampa Bay. So, <laughs> it's always funny. Always funny. You know, Bear's catching back up on his Outback Steakhouse uh, commercials here with the hockey season commencing yesterday. There you go. Great to have Eric here. Uh, did Shad do the art himself with AI? No, it was um, uh, it was Mike Miller out there doing some, doing some excellent work. Although we're still waiting, still waiting on uh, Lone Star, Lone Star out there. Did, did he do that? Would be interesting. He should just do the next book with um, just an AI. There you go. I don't know. That might look, that might look very much like an AI, uh, written thing there. So there we go. Anyways, anyways, there you are. Uh, one and only, the one and only campaign update that Bear has here. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's it, people. That is it. So there we are. There is, there is all of that. So I don't know. Uh, do you guys want me to go and check out the Grand Prix book? I don't know. I, it was on Stupid ESPN. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Yes, it was. That was Bear. Oh my goodness, uh, if Bear could go on a side rant here for one second with hockey. Hockey talk time! Hockey talk time. Uh, yeah, Bear is boycotting ESPN. Uh, so he had to go online to find uh, the uh, to find the radio station uh, that, that carries the lightning. Unfortunately, Bear doesn't live in Tampa Bay, so he had to go onto the NHL app, which they completely changed, tried to find where they used to have the radio couldn't find it, had to download a completely different app, uh, got it loaded and ready to go. And the app, when you go and hit listen here, it just goes to a browser, which allows you to listen in. And it's like, why well, just give me the freaking browser address and let me go to it. Uh, anyways, uh, they won. Congratulations, Bolts. Half of the team gone, but uh, there you go. There is Bear's hockey talk for the day. Uh, unless, unless P-Bunny drags him back into it. A bear likes a steak. How often do bears eat cow? Every every week, man. Every week. Always got to do. Always got to do a steak. Always got to do steak once a week, man. Always. Uh, he says, "Oh, ho oi! <laughs> should should be oi hockey time." Uh, Ottawa Senators are in the lead against the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure they're completely flopped. That's all right, people. Uh, just, just you wait, sir. They'll completely fall on their face uh, and lose to the excellent Carolina Hurricanes out there. There you go. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Vasilevsky. Poor Vasilevsky. Our, our main goaltender. The, the, the main head, head honcho, the head cheese. The best goaltender probably in the world um, <laughs> is out for like three months. So we, we have like all of our backups that we just traded for. We got rid of all our veteran guys and got rid of... Got a couple of new new goaltenders. Oh boy! So uh, anyway, he did pretty good. Did pretty good last time. So, uh, anyways, there is that beer. Beer no. Oh, for crying out! Let's see. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain streams. Streaming. Oh, for crying out loud! Okay, open oh, just Pardon me, people. Poor. Poor. Uh. Okay. Let me. Uh, it looks like it's doing fine. 
Uh, if Bear is timing out, let him know in the chat. I apologize. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll work once again. Yeah, there it goes. Gosh dang it. Every time it rains, people, it, it's the rain. Blame it on the rain. Blame it on the rain. Uh, okay, so let me, let's, let's go to this. Let's just see if this, let's see if this works, people. Pardon. Pardon me over here. Let's see. Do the thing with the thing. So that's there. Is it showing it? It should show it. No. Timing. Timing out. Gosh dang it. Okay, there we go. Let me, I'm sorry, people. Let me do a test here. Gosh dang it. Test. Okay. Oh, that worked. That worked out. Uh, yeah, you had a bit of dead air for a bit. You see now? Okay. Okay, thank you, people. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know. Oh, once again, uh, it is raining uh, cats and dogs outside, so the internet could go at any time. That's kind of what, you know, it makes a bear show kind of interesting there. Oh, uh, there we are. There we are. There we are on the, let's show it. Come on. Do the thing with the thing. There we are. Uh, 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 hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see. We will see, people, if this works or not. <laughs> oi, 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 YouTube. Stinking YouTube. Well, uh, let Bear, let, let at least Bear do a one story for you good people. If it still hangs up, then, um, then we will go from there. We'll go from there. Uh, completely changing up the show here for you good people. All right, uh, let's go to our good friends out here at the New York. That would be the post, people. Is it showing? Oh, for crying out loud. Come on, man. Do the thing with this. It should be. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. <sighs> one of these days. What, what does Bear say, P Money? He says, one of these days. The professional show. There we go. There we are. Okay. Back back to it, people, here. Uh, from the New York Post. <laughs> uh, New Yorkers. New Yorkers, people, are ditching therapists for psychics. They say, I just kind of gave up. Uh, this from uh, Alexander uh, Kirshner. Uh, no one could have seen this coming, except for uh, perhaps those with the gift of second sight. Uh, some New York area residents are fed up with their therapists Dishing their shrinks for psychics who give them real, quote unquote, real guidance. Uh, 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 Aria Del Amor, uh, 35, an artist and model. Uh, is there any other type? Uh, living in Jersey City was dissatisfied with therapy for nearly 30 years. Holy, that's a long time to be in therapy. You'd figure after, after the first decade or so, you, you, you would make some sort of progress. Uh, so she decided to seek guidance from an intuitive healer practicing tarot and astrology. I just kind of gave up on therapy after a while because I don't find it helpful. After 30 years. Wait a minute, how old was she? 35. Wait a minute, she was in therapy for... She's only 35. Either she's lying about her age or she's been... <laughs> she's been in therapy since she's five years old. Somebody took the binky from this poor lady... And she just, I just completely fell, fell apart. A therapist are in no rush to get your problems figured out. That should be a, that should be a bumper sticker. It drags on. It's a very long progress. Uh, in fact, Adele Moore doesn't think therapy is ideal for many people due to a cost barrier. There we go. And Melissa is here. Congratulations. She made it. And I'm sure Amy is not that far behind. There we go. Uh, hello, Melissa. Uh, p Mike says, uh, pff, Rain, why can't you have normal stuff like snow? Like a number of places in Canada are starting to get tonight. Well, that's, that's, hey, I, listen, you can have the snow. Bear will have the, you know, Category 3 hurricane about to bear down on him. And it just kind of takes a little bit of a right, a right hook sparing bear. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> Potato, potato. Potato, potato. Sorry, I'm like, don't worry about it, Melissa. Uh, Bear barely got the show started. Uh, we've had some uh, run-ins with, uh, let's, let's actually see if it's still working. Come on, Bear. Uh, it is in excellent condition. There we go. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how long Bear stays on. Stays online here. <clears throat> uh, nothing makes 
he might smile more on a bear show than seeing a Lester show up. Uh, working on my flirting. Uh, don't tell uh, Mrs. Peabody out there. Do not tell that. Do not tell that at all. I, I don't need a therapist. I have my imaginary friends to tell my problems to. There you go. Uh, seeking a therapist, every, seeing a therapist rather every week is like a uh, it's like a habit. Uh, they want you to keep coming back. It's almost like an addiction in a strange way. Every week? Every week? Holy cow. Uh, Demore also believes uh, therapists are very disconnected from their patients, uh, especially those who choose, quote, a more artistic life path. Mm. Give me a drink. A drink of water, people. Uh, that divide will lead to disconnect at best, and judgment at worst, she says. So that's why I decided to go to a psychic instead. Here we go. Uh, NYC psychic Dante Sabrina, Sab Sabatino, Sabatino 55, who's been reading tarot cards for over 40 years. All right, people, either somebody's lying about their age, or they're all getting started really really early here. I told the Post he has seen an uptick in people seeking alternative healing uh, during the pandemic and the years leading up to it, uh, when things were changing with the economy and political scene, he says. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. Hmm. A lot of people uh, have just been seeking out more into the unknown and more kinds of healing from different modalities. Wow, there's your word for today. Including tarot, astrology, and the other one. <laughs> I love how he says, uh, the other ones too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before finding her own internal compass through her psychic, the more uh, began a traditional psychotherapy uh, journey when she was five. After her, she sought out a psychic at five years old. Okay, sure. I, somebody stole her binky. Uh, as an adult, she saw several therapists, but felt frustrated by the process. So, hey, let's let's go to tarot cards. What the heck? Why not? I mean, you know, if the therapist can't do it, hey, let's go to the tarot card reader. Why the hell? Uh, Eric says, no shame on people that actually need therapy. Yeah, again, uh, beer, I just thought the um, headline was funny. We, we, we're not trying to make fun of mental illness out there. If you, if you do need any sort of help out there, uh, please, uh, whether it is a tarot card reader, or a uh, psychic, or just a, a regular old therapist out there, uh, please uh, go go uh, go get the help that you folks need, please. Uh, let's see, um, uh, no shame on people that actually need uh, theory, uh, but I, I think most of these people are just uh, like being the cent like to be the center of attention, and the therapist gives them that. Uh, no, uh, well, probably, probably, um, y you know, the, the, uh, Miss Demore lady there, she was talking about uh, how it almost becomes like an addiction. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could either be addicted to the, um, uh, like what you're saying, uh, being addicted to the attention, but you could also be addicted to, you know, okay, this is, this person can solve my problems. You know, uh, maybe it'll be this week. Maybe it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be the week after. You know, so they keep they, they keep uh, getting stuck into that cycle. Which, um, uh, yeah, if your if your therapist isn't helping you, no. I mean, that's that. Please, please go seek other help out there. So uh, there you go. Uh, P Bunny has, uh, or excuse me, Eric has uh, many voices in his head to talk to as well. <laughs> Let's see, uh, P-Mike says, I told my therapist I don't need help. I have a talking bear on the computer who helps me. Bear needs to start charging per hour here. I, he tried to call some doctors to take me away for some reason. Take him away. I'm so sorry, P-Mike. So sorry about that. I, uh, she admits, I'm, I'm assuming, Mrs. Della, uh, that, uh, how do you pronounce her name? Uh, Demore. Demore. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Moore admits uh, some therapists uh, she saw were very good, uh, but there were some missing uh, because they didn't give her the mobility of heart and spirit to move forward. Somebody stole her binky. Uh, Demore now uh, consults with her healer astrologer about twice a year. Really? You went from once a week to twice a year. <laughs> An hour and a half session with him cost her $125. 
that's not bad. And it feels as though she's imbued in a oracle mystic way, despite being skeptical at first. Over time, I sort of felt I was getting something very real. Somebody spoke to me as if they knew my soul. Something that transcended any experience of therapy I've ever had. There you go. We actually have, uh, we, we have a, uh, what do they call it, the, the hand readers, the, uh, the, palm, the palm readers. Uh, we've got a place um, uh, kind of nearby that does palm readings. Uh, and it's, it's really funny because out there they've, uh, every once in a while they'll have cars for sale, like used cars. I, I'm assuming somebody can't pay their bills so they got to sell their car or something. And, and you would figure, okay, if you're a psychic, like wouldn't you know who's buying the car? Like, you know, as soon as the person uh, walks in the door, like, I know what you want. That car right outside. It's yours. It's yours for the right price. <laughs> I always thought it was funny. Psychic selling cars. So there you go. There he is. With his tar tarot, and it looks like a horseshoe? I guess? Okay. What the hell? Why not? Uh, Sabatino uh, said clients uh, typically come to him two or three times a year uh, with specific questions or general readings about the next chapter in their life. Uh, his specialty is a tarot card readings, uh, which he calls a form of divination and a prediction. Divina, di divination. Uh, divin whatever now. Uh, expecting beer to figure out how to say that is tough. And a full 60-minute session costs 250 bucks. Uh, while his approach to reading tarot is therapeutic and predictive, uh, he said it doesn't replace what traditional psychotherapy could do for people. Uh, Sabatino focuses on the next uh, two years of a person's life, while therapists uh, help people heal from their past. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a very pro-therapy person, he says. I've helped many clients explore the potential of entering therapy or recovering or some form of psychological help if I see that's needed. That's a smiling face right there. What the heck? Well, she's got, she's got jugs, that's for sure. Uh, Betsy LaFay, a 44-year-old psychic in upstate New York. I, I'm assuming that's this person. There we go. Yeah, Betsy LaFay. There we go. Uh, uh, just a tragically placed uh, weave right there, unfortunately. Very tragically, tragically covering up the goods there. Uh, a 44-year-old psychic in upstate New York was a NYC social worker for 10 years before becoming a psychic. A coach and a founder of the Trust Yourself in Tuition School to help others master their intuitive gifts. Uh-oh, for what the heck? Uh, for crying out loud. Hold on one second, people. I think we have to do a thing. Okay, there it is. Oh, my gosh. Ah, <sighs> uh, man. The, 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 the new OS is just throwing beer off here. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Uh, P. Mike says, uh, if I uh, ever was a tarot card reader, I would just mess with them and have every card uh, in the pile be the death card. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> Uh, LaFay, uh, who was named a top psychic medium by Time Out New York last year, congratulations, uh, has clients who see her for readings over psychotherapy as well as those who do both. Uh, let's see, uh, her clients who see her for readings oh, over psychotherapy as well as those who do both. Uh, she also recommends some clients see psychoanalysis as well. I don't shy away from suggesting therapy if my intuition or my logic and clinical background suggests so, she says. Uh, uh, or, or just motorboating. A bear would recommend motorboating to help out a lot. Of, uh, you know, the fellas. Uh, hey, the ladies, too, maybe. But um, uh, once again, motorboating. Uh, LaFay was a social worker for families of homicide victims, as well as domestic violence counselor, but quit her job in 2011 as her growing psychic powers left her burnt out. Wait a minute. Wouldn't her psychic powers uh, tell her about domestic violence ahead of time? Or even homicides? I mean, uh, if you could have psychic powers, wouldn't you use your psychic powers for good? Yeah. I had all these gifts and in my social job work. Social work job, rather. All of my gifts are like Niagara Falls, she explains. I wound up having a vicarious trauma because I was taking on all the trauma all my clients for 10 years. In 2009, she opened her first psychic mediumship practice 
after learning how to master her gifts. Well, they, I see two gifts right there. Two gifts. Two beautiful gifts. Uh, while learning to talk to dead people accurately. Uh, you wouldn't want to do that inaccurately, people. Uh, LaFay said she's grateful she never uh, had to use a psychic mediumship abilities when she was a social worker for families of Muhammad. Well, you need to tell people before they die. Come on. She's grateful that she never had to tell people uh, before they die that they're going to die. Uh, no, lady, that, that is the most important gift of a psychic. Hey, you're about to die. Oh, psychic, save my life. Uh, but grew tired of having to bite her tongue when she was receiving intuitive downloads with some clients. A therapist can't really feed you information. That's not sort of like clinical, uh, she says. Uh, really, they're not supposed to put their opinion in even at all. And now able to give information she had to hold back. LaFay charges $497 for a one-hour psychic reading uh, and, and, and hopefully motor boating. Uh, though she said sh um, uh, people shouldn't be seeing a psychic more than every six months. Uh, they they got to, um, you know, they got to charge back up. Got to charge back. I wonder if there's a mirror in the background somewhere. There's got to be a mirror somewhere. Hold on, people. Pardon me one second. Let's see. We're looking. 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 Is she standing on one leg? What's going on up there? I don't know. What, whatever you call it. Uh, lady, listen, uh, you, uh, Joan Rivers, you could have, you could have told Joan Rivers before she was killed by Barack Obama uh, for, for calling Michelle a, um, a, a, a he, she. Uh, come on, uh, you, you could have let her know. Uh, beloved, beloved comic Joan Rivers. I used to love her little, um, uh, 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 fashion show, the, the little fashion show. It came on after The Soup, which was just an excellent show. Oh, uh, they always used to make fun of all the people dressing. Yes. Beer's, beer's fun time there. Beer's fun time. Anyways, uh, if you don't put limits on this, people wind up calling psychics to see if they can cross the street or not. Oh, man. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, she notes, uh, noting uh, she hopes to help people so that they never need a psychic again. Uh, she says, I'm trauma-informed, my education in psych uh, psychology, and my 10 years in social work. Uh, really gave me ethics and morals, she says. Not just psychics, uh, but many people in the field of spirituality and self-help uh, really don't have that. It's unregulated. Unreg it needs to be. We need to regulate our need to regulate our psychics out there. Uh, and sometimes, or a lot of times, can do more harm than good if you know what you're doing. Uh, both LaFay and Sabito uh, said spotting a scammer is easy. Uh, if a psychic approaches you versus the other way around, that's never a great sign. And pay attention to what they're charging you, too. Uh, unless they tell you're about to die. And you probably should, probably should listen to that. Uh, Sabino said that while some uh, psychic scammers, psychic scammers? Hmm. Uh, may have some intuitive gifts. They'll use their knowledge as a hook to tell people they need to pay more money to heal their blockages. Hey, that sounds like a therapist. Uh, there should be absolutely no upsells. A price should be sent in advance, LaFay said. And if 80% of someone's reading was accurate, but 20% wasn't, don't go back to that person. Wow. I, I, I would have never have known that psychics would have been uh, more ethical than therapists out there. That's, that's a new one on beer. A new one, a new one on beer here. Poor Joan Rivers. Poor Joan Rivers. Uh, here we go. We don't even need to see her face. She's right there. That's nice. That's all. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at jugs right now, people. I, I'm killing time. Killing time. There we go. Uh, so anyways, uh, that was from the New York Post. I'm sorry, Melissa. Uh, and Alexandria Krushner out there. So there you go, people. New Yorkers are ditching therapists for psychics. <laughs> Uh, who wants to take bets a LaFay isn't her real name? Well, if Beer was psychic, he could tell you. He could tell you what her real name is, but I couldn't. Beer is not psychic. Uh, should psychics uh, put that on their business card? I have jugs. <laughs> uh, what, what did Eric call that the other time? It was like milk dispensers or something. I thought that was pretty funny. Which, by the by, people, by the way here, 
Um, should I do this next one first? Let me do this. Well, no, I'll go straight into it. I'll go straight into it because, because uh, we were laughing about that a, a little while back because there was a, this here. There we go. Uh, Bear did a show a little while back. It was titled Fake Dining. Fake Dining. It was, um, uh, we were talking about a news story that was a, a number of college students or uh, college graduates, I should say, had set up kind of a fake listing for a steakhouse. And they had a, a bunch of people thought it was like this brand new, you know, ultra exclusive steakhouse in New York City. Uh, got, there's like a thousand people on the wait list. There was no restaurant. They were just they were just fooling around, uh, with, you know, putting up fake reviews on Yelp or something like that, just kind of, you know, ha having some fun with it. Well, they had a whole bunch of people sign up. They said, okay, well, let's have some fun with this. They kind of did a little prank thing where they opened up uh, the, um, uh, I guess it was kind of a gymnasium, I suppose. I don't know, kind of a community center. I uh, called it a fine dining uh, section out there, and they were serving you know, uh, uh, they were serving steak, so they were trying to do the whole cow, so they were serving milk out there as well. I think that's when Eric was talking about milk jugs. Uh, anyway, so uh, I never put that out there. We had fun. Oh, it was a great time. Uh, uh, on the on the thumbnail, it was a picture of one of the chefs. Obviously, it was photoshopped in where he was serving JFK. You know, I mean, it was like this 20-year-old 25-year-old student. There was no way that he could serve JFK. It was just kind of funny. It was kind of silly. Uh, YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, uh, decided that that was mis dis and mal information out there. It was mis dis and mal information. Uh, and has uh, completely removed um, any searches uh, for it. You can't uh, bear put it up on his archive channel. You know, every once in a while there's like one, two, maybe four or five people that will watch, watch a video on the archive. It's fine. It's on the archive channel. Uh, there was, like, literally none. Usually there's, like, one or two that pops up. We'll watch 20, 30 seconds, something like that. There, there was literally none. It was like, what the hell's going on with this stuff? Went to the, went to the email, come to find out, oh, yeah, YouTube. Hey, we, we've decided to ban your video because it was titled Fake Dining. Like, it, the title's Fake Dining, and it's a, a story about, you know, college kids that, you know, set up a prank for people. That this We're not trying to claim it's real. It's... It's part of the joke. It's kind of funny. It's, uh, no, no, YouTube decided in their infinite, infinite wisdom out there to uh, delist, delist that. So Bear, I tell you, from the Rambo, from the Rambo one, uh, Bear got uh, struck copyright on that. I, I got this one as well. Um, there's been a couple other close calls here, so eh, part of why we're casting off here. We may be cast off of YouTube. You never know. Never know. Thank you, Eric, for remembering that. There you go. For crying out loud. God dang it. Okay, get back to the thing. There we go. There we are. <clears throat> uh, so just like NFTs, PMI says, uh, and professional shows, uh, we need to now see if every show bear mentions jugs. Uh, that should be in part of the intro, shouldn't it? There we are, 29 year veteran of the woods. And jugs! <laughs> Milk jugs! Just go straight to milk jugs. All right. All right. What, why is it showing? Oh, for crying out loud. Hold on one second, people. This thing got screwed up on there. Let me see if this will refresh here. Let's see if it'll do it. Hopefully this works. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Okay. All right. That works. Let's see. Does it work? I'm sorry, people. This thing is just doing... Let's see, will it work? Is the thing with the thing? We just gotta wait 20 seconds. And Bear's Day's been fine. There we go. Okay, so that works. All right, sorry about that, people. Um, the, the new thing here with the OS, like if Bear doesn't, um, uh, he's not active with one of the windows for like a couple minutes, it just goes, it goes blank. Like, oh, okay, thanks. That's, that's, that's helpful. That's helpful. Uh, anyhow, uh, that kind of led Bear into to this little story here, and Bear, this is one of these things where it's like, okay, Bear, this could go one of two ways with the show. I've been trying to do the fun show. You people have seen the fun show here. It went, 
completely the other way here, but we'll, we'll just touch on this just a little bit here. Just a touch here. Talked a little bit about the last time. I didn't want to get too, too far into the world headlines out here. But um, uh, from Deadline, a European commissioner gives good old Elon Musk 24 hours uh, to clean up X of Israel-Hamas con uh, conflict disinformation uh, posts he has joined rival Blue Sky. There you go, a bunch of cheese-eating surrender monkeys. A uh, European commissioner, sorry, p money. a uh, European commissioner for the internal market, uh, Theory Breton, yeah, that's it, uh, yeah, okay, uh, has written to Elon Musk uh, calling him calling uh, him to remove disinformation related to the uh, to the war on his uh, platform on X. How long are we going to have to keep doing this? Platform X, formerly known as Twitter. Which, if you go to the URL, it still says Twitter. You'd figure it would be like www. You know, slash slash x. No, it's it's still Twitter. That's a minor, a minor thing. There. Oh, let me put this back on live chat. Here we go. Let's see. Um, Eric says, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, current events. I'm sure uh, YouTube will love that. Well, if you go into Bear's description under the uh, disinformation tab there. Uh, you'll, you'll find some uh, fun and interesting stories that Bear could spend, oh, the next hour or two on. But uh, no, we're not gonna, not gonna. Yeah, no, it's nothing that's showing anything graphic or anything like that. We're not, not going there. Uh, anyways, uh, following the, God, I hate why they call it terrorist. It wasn't a terrorist, it was something complete. Uh, this is always gonna get Bear. Uh, anyways, I carried out. Uh, against Israel, we have indications that your platform is being used to disseminate illegal content and disinformation in the EU, uh, which you also posted on X uh, Thursday evening. Uh, let me remind you that the Digital Services Act sets a very precise obligations regarding content moderation. Okay, so they've got very precise obligations. Very precise. Down to... You know, down down to the you know last letter that they have there. <laughs> if X fails to comply with the disinformation regulations included in the European Union's Digital Services Act, the platform pa faces penalties including fines of up to six percent of its total worldwide annual turnover. Ha ha! Jokes on you. <laughs> Twitter slash X is losing money left and right. So ha ha ha! Uh, an interesting. Um, uh, timed announcement, uh, Breton then posted some 14 hours later on his ex account, he joined something else, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, in his uh, previous uh, post, Breton gave Musk 24 hours uh, from 7 p.m. Uh, CET. I have no idea what that is. Probably some sort of European time. Uh, on Tuesday, respond to the uh, request for disinformation to be removed from X. So, okay. Uh, you've got plenty of, let's see, where, where did he say that here? Very precise obligations. Very precise. Very, very, very precise. So much responded directly to a Britain's post, asking for a list of the violations allegedly committed by his platform. He says, our policy is that everything is open source and transparent, an approach that I know the EU supports. I love that nice twist there. Please list the violations you allude to on X uh, so that the public can see them. Nothing but cool. Oh. Uh, there has been no further comment from Bucks or X on the matter. And no further comment. Thank you for bearing the lead there, Deadline. Uh, no further comment from Benton's letter either. So all he's doing is saying, okay, you allege that there's violations on my platform. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Can you can you show them to me so I can I, I have an idea what with what you're talking about? You're determining truth uh, your own way. L let me see what that is, and if it's you know something obviously blatantly false out there, yeah, of course we'll we'll take a look at it. So he says, okay, uh, uh, please list those out. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So there you go. That much like much like a bear here. You know, it's like okay, thanks YouTube for copyright striking. The Rambo watch along credit sequence. There was struck for copyright violations for showing the credits in a movie. I'm giving the people credit in the movie, and that's a copyright violation, so. <sighs> Anyhow.
any 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 hell. So there there is that. There there is that. I'm not gonna get into it any further, but there you go. There is do a boot out there. The word jugs summons VM. <laughs> It's like the bat signal. It's like the bat signal out there. It's like, <laughs> holy cow, jugs. I got to get the bear channel here. Uh, yeah, we were talking about uh, psychic, uh, psychics, and uh, it just it just came into the, um, uh, sorry, Melissa out here. It just came into the topic of jugs for some reason. I, I have no idea why, no idea how. I mean, I, I'm not really sure what's, what caused any of that, but um, anyways, yes. Yes, indeed, jugs. Jugs out there. Jugs confirm. Uh, Eric says, let me remind you, <laughs> thank you, let me remind you, the EU, that the EU can, <laughs> our First Amendment negates any of your stupidity. Well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It, it, it seems like they're trying to... Uh, uh, do we get bear dragged into this or not? Uh, okay, pull away from this kid, bear. Talk about jugs. Talk about talk about jugs and milk. Uh, anyway, so uh, yes, bear has bear has plenty of comments. Uh, by the oh gosh, I do not have it right in front of me. Um, uh, we'll we'll just put this. We'll be, I'll put it out this way. Uh, Eric, if you were interested, um, many many moons ago, bear wrote. Uh, a screenplay, a screenplay out there uh, uh, for a movie. Um, uh, uh, P Money got to listen into it. We did it on a, um, a, a kind of a weekly basis. We would kind of read, you know, a couple couple scenes each time. We we finished it up, finished it up here lately. It's called uh, "It Can't Happen Here." Uh, so if you go and look for the uh, playlist for "It Can't Happen Here," uh, uh, great stuff, great stuff out there. Uh, just. Uh, fast forward to the um, uh, last, should be the last chapter, the last, uh, uh, second to last chapter, one of those two, uh, second to last video, I should say, and um, uh, 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 Beer's expertise will be on display there, it will be on display there, and I'll just leave it at that, just leave it at that, so uh, uh, Peabody probably knows what Beer's talking about. Yes, and we never forgot you for the saddest death in movie history, ha ha ha. Yep, yep, uh, you know, I mean, holy cow, when, um, uh, when you're talking about the bad times over there in, uh, World War II Europe, and the, the worst thing out there is, uh, the, the dog died. There you go. There you go. Uh, I come for the bear, it says P-Money, I stay for the dog. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave. I'm sorry, Melissa, that bear did not mean to leave it on, on that picture there. I did it. Uh, be respectful for our female audience out there. All right, let's 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 get to something else. Get to something else out there. Very quickly. Turn away from the skid out there. Turn away from the skid. Uh, anyways, Bear is Bear's knowledgeable about that period in uh, world history after World War II, and there's some interesting stuff out there. And I, 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 um, uh, yeah, we, we'll, uh, we might talk about that another time. Um... Bear would definitely get his uh, channel struck at that point. All right, people. Uh, the New York, the New York Post. Uh, Steve Cuzo out here. Uh, uh, one of Bear's things that he always tries to do every once in a while. We always got to talk somehow about crypto. We also got to talk about food, people. So I always try to throw in a good food story. Sorry, it's uh, the New York Post again. Um, excuse me. Let me grab a drink. Tacos. Give it beers and burps. Ah, I said tacos. Nachos. Gonna have tacos. Taco Wednesday. <clears throat> uh, New York City's best new restaurant is a 186-year-old steakhouse. And it's real. It's not a fake. Not a fake steakhouse. It's been a long time since Wall Street rocked after dark. But the newly oh, reopened, rather, Delmonico's has brought some big-time buzz to the Fi die. The fi. You gotta be in the know. You know, hey, we're gonna go down to the fi die, yo. Oh, okay. Uh, which. I, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a uh, Bear's in the know here. It, it means the financial district. I, I think. Pretty sure. 
which, except for the Stone Street Boozing Zone, <laughs> the Boozing Zone, I can, uh, uh, can still be quiet at night despite uh, thousands of new uh, residents. Delmonico's at uh, 56 Beaver Street. Hmm. Uh, in the district's historic heart uh, is the best revival of an iconic New York restaurant since uh, Gr uh, Graydon, Graydon Carter's uh, bought Wavery Inn back from the dead in 2007. But while Wavery first opened its doors in the Roaring Twenties, Delmonico's launched in the 19, or excuse me, in the 30s, the 1830s. Uh, many customers who flocked to its historic Steakhouse since its reopening last month, after a four-year shutdown, I might know uh, might know little of its Rick Roaring uh, celeb mecca history. Careful, careful, New York Post. Gotta, gotta watch out for that one. Uh, before Delmonico uh, devolved into another mediocre steakhouse in the 21st century, it generated enough lore, legend, and a myth to fill a dozen Food Network installments or a Netflix series. Contrary to an oft-told table, uh, oft-told tale rather, uh, Abraham Lincoln never ate there, uh, but Mark Twain did. Uh, the Del Monaco story uh, began like a fairy tale in the uh, Swiss mountains, where three brothers uh, lived on a small farm. Uh, former New York Times restaurant critic uh, William Grimes writes in his book Appetite City. Mm, I'd love to go to Appetite. Beer always has an appetite. A culinary history of New York. So uh, there you go. Lovely location. I like that. Very classy. That'd be a great place to have a steak, I tell you. Great place. Uh, Eric says, oh, uh, they've copied a Soho. How quaint. <laughs> I hope the steaks weren't 186. God dang it. It paused on me again. Excuse me, people. One second. There we go. There it is. It's doing the thing. <sighs> okay. There we go. Uh, should uh, uh, be uh, should we put up a picture of Nightwing but Nightwing's butt for Melissa? Well, uh, we'll have to do that the next time. Have to do that the next time. <clears throat> uh, they have a boozing zone. <laughs> just just in the zone. You can only stay in the zone. There you go. I know where our family is going for vacation. Well, go to the go to the steakhouse here. Looks great. There you go. Back in back in olden times. Pretty cool. Sorry, people. I'm listening to it just pour down rain outside. Ay, ay, ay. Bear's gonna... Ah, oh, he's gonna get wet after the show here. <clears throat> uh, anyways, there we are. They're pretty cool. I like how it's... I like how they had the oldie... From 1937. 1937. Wait a minute. 1837. They didn't, they didn't have cameras back then. It's probably... Probably, uh... uh early 1900s there. So, pretty cool. Uh, Giovanni and Peter Delmonico opened a cafe and a pastry shop at 23 William Street in 1827, uh, which they ran on strictly French lines. Uh, they later brought in their brother, uh, Francesco's sons, Lorenzo, to run the show. Uh, Delmonico moved to its current location at, in 1837 after a fire destroyed the original. It was America's first, the very first, fine dining restaurant. Uh, Chef Charles Renhof uh, introduced New York City to classic French cuisine and was the first eatery where women could find, uh, could dine, I'm sure fine dine, uh, without men. The classic Del Monaco ribeye steak cut, uh, lobster Newborough, and baked Alaska were all invented there. Pretty cool. So if you ask for a Delmonico, it came from Delmonico's. Well, it didn't really come from Delmonico's. It's, it's the cut. The cut that came from there. Uh, Del, uh, Delmonico's closed during Prohibition and laid empty until the Tucci family rescued it in 1920. Is it Billy Tucci? That'd be pretty funny. I uh, rescued it in 1926 and made it a hotspot. Uh, behind the triangular prow of the eight-story building of uh, the restaurant calls homes, there was a button-down lunchtime scene where the Rockefellers and other stock market wheeler and dealers uh, held court amongst pink, pink, pink tablecloths, uh, the creek crystal and plush draperies and an elegant appointed rooms on two floors. By night, the restaurant morphed into a bold-faced, packed, bold-faced, packed, Supper and Dance Club, that is a, 
That's a word right there. Old face patch. Hmm. There you go. Uh, that doesn't, that looks like the 1980s. Okay. It's in black and white. <laughs> Anything past 2000, it's got to be in black and white. I, I guess that's got to be the, the thing now. <clears throat> uh, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Frank Sinatra, Eartha Kitt, Cary Grant, Lana Turner, and Princess Grace of Monaco used to alight from limousines onto a sidewalk that was otherwise devoid of life after the New York Stock Exchange uh, shut down at 4 p.m. Regular performers included Bing Crosby, Doris Day, and really, Chubby Checker? Pretty cool. According to the 2022 book, The Delmonico Way, very cool, written by Max Tucci. Max Tucci. Uh, the restaurant's global brand officer and grandson of one of the restaurant's previous owners. A Rock Hudson sneaked off to an upstairs uh, penthouse for private needs. Cough, cough. Uh, there was a secret bedroom whose walls never revealed their secret. Uh, Delmonico protected guests from prying eyes with owner Oscar Tucci's ironclad rule, no paparazzi ever inside Delmonico's. A gypsy Rose Lee once stripped atop a table and covered her private parts with only menus. Uh, once in 1957, Tucci sent a limo to pick up Lena Horne following her performance on Jamaica on Broadway. Though exhausted from a night on stage, she thrilled the house by singing Stormy Weather. Speaking of which, uh, in a summertime, in the city. There we go, there's some nice jugs too. Hey, the, the uh, classic jugs. Classic jugs, there we go. Pretty cool. A uh, Gypsy Lee, a uh, picture with Billy Rose. There you go, I don't know who the other lady is there, but there you go. Uh, behind the scenes, Del Monaco also launched the careers of many men who would go on to be integral in the city's restaurant scene. La Sarique's Impresciato, Asirio Marconi, Tony Bay, who ran the Rainbow Room at uh, San Delmonico, and Harry uh, Polakis, uh, who launched Harry's Steakhouse, all worked there in their use. Polakis. Uh, Leo Apera was waiter and manager at Demarco's from 63 to 69, before he struck out on his own to open such restaurants as Leo, Scatarli, and Benini. Uh, he vividly recalled the uh, extracting standards to which Oscar's son, Mario Tucci, held his troops. He says, we were like soldiers. Our fingernails had to be exactly right. They checked every morning to make sure that they were clean. Got them clean on those. Apparently, pink tablecloths. Pink tablecloths. As Captain, I only had two... <laughs> he only had to wait two tables. Uh, with eight seats to take care of, but I had to cook in front of customers. Uh, Mario had a fetish about the Caesar salad. I, uh, there's more to be said there. Uh, maybe not. Uh, we couldn't cut it with a knife. We had to use a fork and spoon to separate the leaves to preserve the scent of the romaine. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, Eric asked, vintage jugs or retro jugs? Um, hmm. Vintage. Let's go with vintage. I, you figure retro is just... Uh, vintage, I, I would assume, uh, would be kind of more... Uh, a classic as a opposed to kind of like a fad reappearing as, as retro. So, a vintage, vintage jokes out there. With all apologies to Melissa. I, I'm assuming Melissa has already left us. I apologize, Melissa. Already left us. Too much, too much talk about jokes. Oh, we couldn't cut it with a knife. We had to use a fork and spoon to separate the leaves to preserve the scent of the remain. The Tucci sold the restaurant in the 1980s and it went dark until the pandemic when a legal battle among partners destroyed its mojo and nearly filled it for good. But new principal owner and managing partner Dennis uh, Turkovic, whatever, uh, along with business partner Joseph Alucci, signed a deal, signed a lease rather, in 2022 with a plan to bring Delmonico's back to life. They spent $4 million, holy cow, on top to bottom wall to wall redesign that preserves the original splendor and spirit with coffered mahogany walls, a barracuda china and tablecloths, and plush, plush rather carpeting. Looks pretty nice. 
That'd be a nice place to go. Have a steak. Have a steak. Hmm. Not bad. There's a salad. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six leaves. I don't know if we'd call that a salad, but uh, there you go. Caesar, Caesar quote-unquote, salad. <laughs> uh, P.Y. says, yikes, I hope my flirting didn't scare Melissa off. Reminds me of when I was in high school. My flirting scared every woman away. I'm assuming woman, I still have this stupid heart thing on there that I keep, keep forgetting about. So, there we go. I'm going to hit a bunch of hearts. There you go. <sighs> Ah, there, there's the main attraction right there. There you go. You, you just get the steak. That's it. That's it. You don't even get any water. You just get some steak for like 80 bucks. There you go. Although bold face, faces such as Clyde Davis, Tamron Hall, Carol Alt, Leslie Snipes, uh, Brenda Vicario, and Julia Hart and Romaine Singer. I have, I, other than Clive Davis and Wesley Snipes, I have no idea who any of these other people are. I have made the scene since last month's reopening. No one expects a full-scale Hollywood routine, uh, return, rather, but the new Delmonico's doesn't need them. On Saturday night, every seat was taken. Executive chef Edward J. Hong um, uh, cooks steaks that lived up to the legend. The signature Delmonico is an 18-ounce prime wet-aged specimen of a Brant Farm ribeye. Right, the most flavorful, more flavorful rather than most. Even better was the deep mineral flavored 22 ounce uh, bone in ribeye that's dry aged for 65 days in a Himalayan salt room. Is it a salt room in Himalaya or is it Himalayan salt in some room? And a steal, people, a steal at only $85 uh, versus $79 for the Delmonico. They strongly recommend for $85 right there. You, you don't get anything else. You get the plate, and you get a steak. And you're lucky you get a fork and a knife. That's it. That is some some high prices there. Uh, everything else was good, especially a crab cake at a steakhouse. That was 95% crab. Mm. A fabulous Caesar salad, uh, mercifully not made at tableside, uh, laden with anchovies and a creamy young run dressing made from a Pollock bow. Mm. Uh, unlike most new places that seem to raid Starbucks for talent, the poised, mature floor team hail from places such as Le Cherie, Moray, and the Four Seasons. Wait a minute, isn't the Four Seasons where all the uh, all the illegals are at right now? I, I, think, they're, I think they're all depositing them over there. I, I asked uh, Ira Pia if he missed Delmonico's after he left to start his own restaurants. Uh, he says, yeah, I missed it. The glamour, the genteel way of serving people he says, I still miss it today. Of course, Delmonico's might be very different in three months or one month. Five new restaurants can lose their juice in a blink of an eye. But I hope it holds up for longer, say another 186 years. There you go, people. There is your $85 steak. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff indeed, people. Sounds like, oh, for crying out loud, hold on. I gotta refresh this thing. Okay, let's see if this works. Sorry, people, if this conks out. No, there we go. There is a steak. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, you, you go from jugs to steaks out here. We, we've chased Melissa away. Probably Amy as well. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. ay. All right, people. Well, um, I tell you what, it is pouring, pouring rain outside. I have no idea how long Bear's internet is going to stay alive here. So we might, might wrap it up relatively quickly. A little bit earlier than normal, but um, that's all right. Uh, once again, we try to do this every Wednesday and Saturday nights, 8 p.m. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it on... Um, Saturday or not. It's kind of a little bit up in the air. Bear will let all of the great people out here, Bear will let you all know uh, if there if there is or if there isn't. Either way, Bear will let you know. I'll, I'll put up a post or something, but uh, just be aware out there if you happen to look on Saturday and you don't see Bear's channel. He's either been shadow banned once again by YouTube uh, or, or it may be 
a little bit of an issue out there for me. We're trying to get some stuff done here. So, uh, anyways, want to thank uh, P Money, uh, the always great Eric Huffles out there. Uh, Bear himself, who did a test. Uh, Melissa, probably Amy as well. VM is coming for the jugs in all of our Russian bots and lurkers. We do. We do appreciate it. Uh, let's see, you mean, you, you mean I might have to hang with family on Saturday? Well, if Bear can... Uh, I sure hope not, P-Money. Bear will try to make sure that you don't hang out with your own family on Saturday, but... Uh, it may be just the case. It may be. So uh, just to keep an eye out there for the posts uh, for beer, I'll try and let people know uh, Friday, uh, hopefully Saturday at the latest, but definitely Friday. What the heck is going on with beer here? All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff going crazy with beer here. But uh, anyways, we were actually going to do, <laughs> I wanted to kind of uh, go through the, um, where is it here? There we go. Kind of wanted to do the, um, uh, go through Earthbound. Uh, just kind of go through it with you guys, talk about it, and, and read it and check it out. But, uh, it didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way. So maybe, maybe the next time, maybe the next time we'll try it out. I was trying to do the, let's see if I can do it here. Let's see, will I do it? Why is it not, is it turned off? It's still on. What the heck? What the heck is going on here, man? Ah, there we go. There it is. There we go. So, uh, trying to do a little picture in picture there with a little camera trickery, but, um, it might, might be the next time, people. Might be the next time. Uh, you would have thought the jugs would have attracted the porn bots. I haven't seen the porn bots for quite a while. Uh, the Russian bots were active for a little bit, but, uh, no, the, the porn bots have, have seemed to kind of disappear from their channel. So, eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, everybody. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. I hope, hope everyone out there has a great... If I don't see you on the weekend, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, if not, hope to see you back here on Saturday. We'll see. Again, keep an eye out there for Bear's Post. But you know what? All this talk about Delmonico steaks, and also jogs, has made Bear hungry and a little thirsty, too. So he's got to head back into the woods. So until next time, people. Grrrr.